Good morning. Uh, my name's Andy Mills, and as most of you know, I've uh, had the pleasure of serving as the interim president of the King's College for the past nine months. Mm -hmm. But an important role of an interim president is to hand over to the real full-time president, and it's my joy to do that here this morning. So I'd like to welcome those of you, a big crowd here at King's this morning, and for those who are with us via live, uh, live streaming, I'd like to welcome you also. Today's announcement, frankly, is the result of a lot of hard work, it's the result of a lot of prayer, and it's been a very comprehensive process. I'd like to take just a moment to describe that process to you so that you can understand uh, what we've been through in these last six months. In December, the board formed a presidential search committee comprising 12 members, uh, six board members, and six members from other parts of the community, the King's community. Uh, that group has met regularly, They've prayed diligently. They've worked through about 50 serious applications. Uh, they've spent three days in intensive one-on-one -on -one interviews with six candidates. Um, they've worked then as a subset of that committee, worked with the chosen candidate at that point uh, and have worked with that candidate for several days, done all the background checking, the reference work, all of those things that are necessary to bring a candidacy to conclusion. And as of Tuesday of this week, met and took a unanimous vote uh, to recommend this candidate to the Board of Trustees. The Board of Trustees uh, have been apprised of the work of the uh, search committee during that whole time, uh, and they met too on Tuesday to uh, think about and to consider the uh, recommendation of the search committee. Uh, we had an opportunity, uh, six of the members of the uh, board have been on the search committee, so obviously had deep knowledge of the candidate. Uh, we had the candidate on the telephone during that board meeting so that the other members of the uh, board could spend time and ask questions and satisfy themselves with the candidacy. And at the end of that meeting, once again, the board took a vote, and the vote was unanimous to extend uh, the offer to the candidate that the, uh, that the search committee had recommended. So uh, it's with great pleasure and uh, great pride uh, that I want to introduce to you the sixth president of the King's College, Dr. Gregory Allen Thornbury. But I'm not going to let him talk for a while because I have the microphone and you know that I enjoy that. But uh, I'd like to give you a little background on Greg before he comes up and speaks. Greg comes to us from Union University, where most recently he was the founding dean of the Union School of Theology and Missions. Uh, and he is also the vice president, or was the vice president for spiritual life at Union. 
As dean, uh, he expanded over these few years the enrollment of the school to uh, 500 students, uh, in initiated a number of very innovative programs there, including a full master's online program. Uh, Greg is a full professor of philosophy. Uh, he is a bachelor, he has his bachelor's degree from Messiah College, a master's of divinity from Southern Seminary, and also his PhD from Southern Seminary, and has done graduate work also at Green Templeton College in Oxford. He's an author and an editor. Uh, his most recent book actually came out this year, 2013, on Carl Henry, uh, is receiving very positive critical reviews. He's a senior fellow of the Kairos Journal, which is an online journal that many of you may know. Uh, reaches 100,000 mostly pastors in 100 countries to really help them uh, critically think about the issues in the public square. He's the theological editor of Bible Mesh, which is an online Bible literacy program, and working with uh, many people, people like Eric Metaxas and Tim Keller here in the city, working on that particular project. In addition, he's a regular speaker uh, at, uh, and teacher at conferences, at colleges, schools, and uh, also at churches. Greg and his wife, Kimberly, uh, will celebrate their 20th anniversary, have celebrated their 20th anniversary already this year. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, Greg comes from Pennsylvania originally, and Kimberly is a Jersey girl. And uh, so they're sort of coming back home to the Northeast, which is wonderful. Kimberly herself has a PhD. She was also part of the uh, leadership, senior leadership team at Union University. So we're looking forward to welcoming her as our first lady. Interestingly enough, uh, Kimberly's mom, Carolyn Carmichael, is an alum of the King's College from Briarcliff Manor. And Kimberly's father, Jack, helped Friedhelm Redon, the third president of the King's College, with a lot of the work that helped the new formation of the King's College back in New York City some 13, 14, 15 years ago. Uh, and in addition to that, Greg has let me know that he has had a King's College chair in his office for these many years. So I guess it was just meant to be. This is a closing of the loop, and that's kind of exciting. They have two daughters, Kate and Carolyn. And uh, there's a wonderful passage, as you know, in Acts chapter 15, uh, when the church, Jerusalem, get together and they pray over a particular issue and consider an issue. And there's that wonderful scripture that said, it seemed right to us on the Holy Spirit that. And I think I can say very clearly that through this process, it has seemed right to the Holy Spirit and to us, both at the search committee level and at the board level, that Greg Thornbury is the right man for the job at the King's College at this time. And so it's without uh, further ado that I would like to uh, introduce him, ask him to come to the microphone for us to welcome him and for him to say a few words. So Greg, would you come to the podium? Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and good morning. It, uh, it is a deep privilege and honor. I'm, I'm greatly humbled to welcome you today as the sixth president of the King's College here in New York City. I want to uh, bring a, a warm welcome of greeting to faculty and to staff, parents, students, uh, alumni, and friends of this great institution as we work together uh, toward a preferred future for this great institution. I want to thank uh, uh, several people who have been instrumental throughout this uh, process to bringing us to this point. I, I want to thank Andy Mills, uh, and I think we all should thank Andy Mills, and we'll find appropriate ways to do that in the days to come for his exemplary leadership uh, as the interim president of this school during this time. Uh, I have big shoes to fill, and um, I'm, I'm uh, very grateful that it, he is going to be uh, by my side uh, as we get started. I also would like to thank John Spear for a terrific search process. The, the work of the search committee, the due diligence that they did uh, is commendary, and uh, we want to thank them as well. John Beckett, who has served as chairman of the board during uh, this whole time, has kept me apprised of the process throughout the way, so I want to thank him. Uh, they were not able to be here today because of, of the weather, and I 
also would like to thank uh, Allie Hanley. Those folks came down and met with uh, me and Kimberly several weeks ago as a subcommittee from the board, and I want to extend my thanks to them. I've been asked today to share briefly uh, something of my vision for the King's College as we move forward together. And I want to begin by stating very clearly this. We have the right college at the right time and with the right programs. When we think about what we do here at the King's College, uh, the PP&E major, politics, philosophy, and economics, business and finance, media, culture, and the arts, these are those disciplines that liberate people, that keep them free, and keep a society strong. But most importantly, not only do we have the, the right college um, with the right programs at the right time, but friends, we are in the right place. New York City is the financial and cultural capital of the universe, the known universe at this time. And um, we could do space travel, and there may be somewhere out there that could beat uh, where we sit on terra firma, but I very much doubt it. <laughs> and I, I'm reminded of, uh, of the word from the University of Virginia sociologist James Davison Hunter, who, uh, who has written about the fact that if you really want to have impact and effect on a society, you must lead from the center of culture and not from the periphery. Now, that statement may seem like something like a truism, but apparently this has not been something that, broadly speaking, Christian higher education has gotten. Because, as we all know, the King's College is the only freestanding college uh, in New York City. Now, there's certainly a historical reason uh, for, for that gap that uh, waited for King's, King's College to take the stage here in the city. There's a historical backdrop here. There, there's a long history of almosts for Christian higher education in this city. Back at the turn of the century, during the Gilded Age, one of the great theologians of the time, Augustus Hopkins Strong, anybody out there looking for baby names, Augustus would be a good one if you want them destined for great things. Augustus Hopkins Strong was a preeminent theologian, had spent much time here in New York City, was the president of Rochester Seminary. He also just so happened to be the son-in-law of John D. Rockefeller. And it was A.H. Strong's great ambition and dream that his father-in-law would establish a Christian university in New York City. Now, most of you may not know who A.H. Uh, Strong was, but you definitely know the rest of the story there. John D. Rockefeller took a pass on a Christian university in New York City and founded the University of Chicago instead. So there was a first missed opportunity. Later on, mid-century, a lot of people don't know this, but Billy Graham and uh, my mentor, Carl F. H. Henry, and I certainly had many conversations with Carl about this over the years, in, in the 1950s and the 1960s, it was their great desire, it was their lifelong dream to see a great Christian college in New York City with the best and brightest and most prepared students and the best and brightest and most prepared faculty. And they worked very hard, tirelessly in fact, for years to see that vision brought to a fruition, but in, at the end of the day they just could not get it done. And it was one of the great regrets of Carl Henry's life. And so here we are. In 1998 and 1999, I genuinely, I don't use this term loosely, but I, I think it was a genuine miracle of God that occurred, facilitated by the brilliant leadership of Bill Bright and J. Stanley Oaks to restart uh, this college in, in the heart of the city, taking the historic legacy of the King's College, founded by Percy Crawford, great evangelical leaders like Percy Crawford and Robert Cook, and rebirthing that dream here uh, in Midtown Manhattan initially in the Empire State Building. So what's the lesson of history that we can take from this? The King's College in New York City is an idea that is too good to fail. No one else besides us will get a chance to do this again. It would cost too much and it would take too long to get the wheels turning again. So our lesson is we must get this right. This is historic Christianity's last and best shot to lead from the center of culture 
with Christ at the center. And there's a shout out to all you Bonhoefferians out there. <laughs> now, why, why is Kings important to the Christian movement at large today? This is more than just a college in New York City. There's something greater here at stake. And it is this. Movements do not typically progress beyond or rise above the defining academic institutions of their cause. Uh, and the most important and strategic of the inst uh, higher educational institutions in this country are located in or near major urban centers. But for some reason, uh, Christian higher education does not seem to have gotten this message. So my vision for the King's College is this. I would like to see us, as we work together, to see the King's College be a galvanizing institution of solidarity for traditional Christianity and the legacy of the greatness of those cherished and animating ideals of the West that have made this nation great and a source of hope for the entire globe. We get to do this, and we get to do it in New York City. Now, how do we do this? Well, one of my favorite quotes that my students from Union know, I, I have maybe about a dozen favorite quotes that I just wear out. They can number them, and they can just, oh, here comes number seven. But here is number one, probably. And it's from G.K. Chesterton. Tradition is the democracy of the dead. It allows the most underprivileged class at all a chance to have a seat at the table a chance to vote about how we should govern our lives as a society. And that underprivileged class are our ancestors. What would they say if they were allowed to vote? What would they bring to bear to help us move forward as we plot and, and we uh, think together about how to work for the common good in society? And he, this is my core conviction, following on the heels of that Chesterton quote. We cannot you cannot outflank the great texts and traditions and genius of Christianity as a tireless generator of human flourishing. We are the legatees of a great inheritance, and we owe it to ourselves, and we owe it to the world to get this right. We are doing this project of the King's College together at a remarkable time in the history of this city New York City has never been uh, known for being a, a hotbed of evangelical and historic Christian sentiment. But here in the last 10 to 15 and 20 years, a remarkable renaissance of Christian life and thought, an unprecedented renaissance of Christian life and thought has been happening in this city. And so it is my desire to see the King's College become an indispensable partner in advocating a shared vision for the common good in our time in this city and for the good of the culture. And if you want to think about it this way, this is what I would like to see happen for Kings. If you think of a railroad analogy, all of the trains have to pass through a central roundhouse. I would like for the King's College to be that roundhouse, to be that academic leader, that discussion poison and place of conversation for our time keeping in mind the admonition of St. Paul in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 16, making the use of this kairos moment. You know, there are two great Greek words for time in the Bible. There's chronos time, there's tick-tock time, and there's kairos time, an opportunity either seized or lost forever. It is our chance and our opportunity and our honor to seize this moment for Christ. And by God's grace, the effort will succeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would now like to invite uh, to the podium Allie Hanley, who's been so instrumental in this entire process and a real prayer warrior. It's my honor to ask her to come up to the platform and to uh, pray for us now. 
Thank you so much, Greg. Um, actually, before I pray, I would like to say three things, having been on the board for a number of years and been a part of the search committee. Price Harding, who conducted the search, was absolutely outstanding, along with John Spear, who shepherded us for us who were on the committee and on the board. Um, and as Andy said, during that process, we met a number, a good number of very outstanding candidates. And I think that was due in large part not only to Price's hard work and the work of the committee, but I think it was also due to the increased stature of the institution. Um, this is a stature that has increased, not because we have beautiful ivy-covered brick buildings and a magnificent campus, and not because we have a huge endowment, but because we have been motivating, inspiring, and educating young people to be excellent in the things that they do. The young people that we educated at the King's College come out of the college having had brilliant internships in New York City and securing jobs which will ultimately confirm the mission of the King's College, which is to put these students in strategic institutions around the country. And as we met and talked with the various candidates, Greg became the hands down favorite to continue this amazing work of this great institution. We think that his his vision for the future of the college is exactly what the Lord has intended, and we were just absolutely thrilled that he accepted our offer to become our next president. Having said that now, I would like to pray, and I would ask you all to bow your heads. Dear Lord Jesus, this process has been so covered by prayer, and your Holy Spirit has been so evident throughout it. We are so grateful for Greg Thornberry and for his lovely and very accomplished wife who will be joining this institution, Lord. We thank you for all the foundation that's been laid by those who have gone before. We thank you for the students, for the faculty, for the staff, for the board, and for the alumni, and for the parents of the students, Lord Jesus. We just ask that in the coming days that all these groups will come together spontaneously to help Help Greg um, as he becomes familiar with his new role as president of the college. And Lord, we just pray that in the coming days you will show us new ways to honor, love, and serve you and glorify you, which above all is what we're here to do. And thank you for the students. Thank you for the mission. Thank you that we are showing that the mission is being fulfilled in these precious students. And we just praise you and thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.